Hello there everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a good long look at the construction of a shelter which I'm I'm calling an arctic shelter because it's it's using materials that you would tend to find in certainly northern and possibly arctic regions or subarctic regions. You don't actually find much in the arctic what you could build a shelter out of apart from snow and ice. So arctic isn't necessarily 100% accurate. <laughs> But what I am hoping for is some arctic weather to test this out. I'm sitting in here, it's probably about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius outside. Very, very windy though, so we do have a wind chill factor. I've got the fire on outside. And in here, I'm actually not cold. I've been trying to film this particular intro for about 25 minutes, half an hour or so, because my camera keeps playing up. Hopefully, this time it will be recording. And I'm only, I've only got a t-shirt and a very thin fleece and jeans on. And I'm actually still pretty warm, even though it is in the middle of our winter. Oh, look how big this thing is, man. <laughs> it's gigantic. The far end of it, just beyond the camera there, that's the great feasting hall. <laughs> so if you've got a spare hour or more and you want to learn how to build a shelter using natural materials please watch on and enjoy hello there welcome back in this video we're going to be building a survival shelter out of basic materials i.e wood and branches and leaves and so on now around my place we've been getting loads of trees taken out most of them have been softwoods predominantly sitka spruce and also um Scots pine. Now we're not going to be using any of the Scots pine because it's not a particularly good one for making sh shelters out of. Just doesn't have the right structure. You'll see what I mean in a moment. We've also taken a lot of Leylandi down as well. And the branches that come off there are absolutely perfect. Okay, this place here is as good as any. We've got west over there, east over there. So the westerly wind comes from here. I'm going to have the back of the shelter facing to the west so that's where the wind will be coming from you never want it facing into the wind because you're just gonna get cooled and it's gonna be very windy in there right so we've got a couple of hardwood end pieces here they are actually hawthorn when we cut this hedge down here so they'll come in useful nice and strong we've got a main ridge pole which is actually a skinned Leylandi tree and then we've got another couple of hardwood end pieces. Uh, what's that one? That one is hawthorn and that one is holly. So before I start making this, I'll just run through the tools that I've got that may or may not be used and something that definitely is not going to be used. Okay, something everybody will be familiar with. A little bushcraft knife. That may be used, it may not. Second, a Baku Laplander saw, that's excellent for cutting your big round pieces to length. That will probably be used. Thirdly, a little hatchet. This has already been used and it will continue to be used. I'd like to think I could build the whole thing with just this tool because it is really, really good. But something which won't be used, which you see most people using, is paracord. I won't be using that or any sort of string. This is going to be 100% natural. So you're probably thinking, why, how is he going to keep these end pieces together? Well, I'm going to use another sort of wood, which is willow. Got loads of that grown around my pond. You find it in bogs, um, round rivers, all over the place. It puts out little wispy growths like that. That is very malleable, it'll bend around here and it will actually act like a sort of wooden rope. So we just need to decide roughly where that's going to be, that seems to be about right. And then we just bend that round and literally just tie it together using the willow. There we go. 
obviously I will put more on there which I'll do now and that will create a very solid fixing on here there's no need for paracord when you've got willow and willow grows in practically all of the UK recognizing it is easy if you have a basic knowledge of trees and I suggest that everybody develops at the very least a basic knowledge of trees because that is absolutely essential willow is a marvelous thing to use you can make traps out of it you can make shelters out of it in fact I'll put a link to two videos where I use willow and the first one will be a willow shelter which is almost like an inverted coracle that stood for many years and the second video link I'll put in the video description is a willow fish trap now that one took me a long time to make but it came out very very well and it did actually work now you can literally tie willow in knots and if you don't have access to willow and you're able to recognize spruce trees which is a sort of a fir tree you can dig up the spruce roots they will do the same job as the willow but obviously you need to know what a spruce tree looks like I'll show you that in a minute yep that is strong very strong go nowhere okay so that's one done we'll go to the other end and do that as well Right, and that'll just about do for that one. Now all we need to do is put the ridge on and lash that on exactly the same way. And you could just leave it like this, so it's like a triangle. You know, you've got your ridge pole on here going down to nothing. Simply start covering that and you've got your in and out from here. However, I'm gonna put that extra support on the end, have the ridge straight have the entrance in the front here and have the sides here just for storage and a little bit extra space in the shelter. I want it to be kind of a, a two-man shelter sort of a size or a one-man very comfortable shelter. Now when you're lashing this ridge pole on you don't have to have it supported on both ends when you're lashing it on because this will have a certain amount of flexibility. Lash one end on then lift the other end up and lash that on. Don't try and support one end while slashing the other end on, especially if you're building this thing by yourself, it will be difficult. Really lashing this top piece on is all about just holding it in place and stopping it from wobbling about or possibly from being pulled out and therefore collapsing. Okay, that's pretty solid. I think what I might do is put another one going down from here, just so when I lift that other end up, the structure doesn't flop over. I am going to need one going down here anyway, so I'll fit that one now. That'll do. That's nice and strong. As you can see, it isn't very pretty, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. 
and on this end I'm going to put one going down at an angle as well just to make sure we eliminate the, the rock that it's got now because it's still not very steady Right, that's pretty solid now. Obviously, we've got a long length here. I'll get the little saw, cut this off, and cut that off, just to tidy it up. Okay, so we're getting there. That is part of the skeleton of our structure up. However, I am going to put another three, four, possibly five going down off the ridge just to give it a bit more stability and also just to give us some sort of demarcation as to where we want the door in the front. Okay, that's our extra supports on. I'm gonna lash these on exactly the same way as I did with the ends. I don't really need to film that. Maybe add another 20 minutes or so onto the build for that. You don't need to see 20 minutes of that because that's gonna make for an incredibly boring video. Okay, I've got the ridge on, all lashed up. I've also added another pole along here which took probably about 15 minutes and I've put one above where I want the door as well because I want this to be like a little tunnel that you get in this one that goes along here is really just to level up inside of the uh, shelter because the shelter is built on a slope I'm going to get little thin logs and lay them across here and use that as the floor so the floor will be raised up a little bit off the ground just so it stays a bit warmer and it will be level as well I can insulate it underneath here with um, spruce at the ends of spruce branches or any sort of packed leaves or anything under here so all in all it's going to be a very cozy little shelter well not so much a little shelter you probably get two people in here and all the gear so it's going to be a good size I think I'll put a few more little poles along just to hang the branches on that are going to be covering this thing a bit easier um, so I'll select some of those and show you what I'm doing with them. As you can see, the bit for the floor is absolutely solid. Again, I'm not going to film me lashing all of these on. 
just assume that I'm using willow, which I am. I'll get them all on and then I'll get back to you. Okay, that is the extra brace along the back there. I think I'll continue that around the front to where are we here. So this is going to be our doorway. So I'll have one across here and across here and then from there along there just to continue that theme on of having something to hang more branches on. So unfortunately the sun is going down there's no point in me filming anymore today I'll come back tomorrow and I'll finish this thing off. It's going to be pretty good because it's already more or less up you know I mean we've just got to put another brace along the front um, cut the pieces for the bed cover it and then it's just about done. The actual covering of it doesn't take long it's the construction of this structure, especially when you're not using any paracord or any sort of string or bindings. I'm using willow and whilst it's okay, it's not as easy as using paracord. Paracord is exceptionally easy to use, but remember, we're not using any artificial materials in the construction of this particular shelter. So I want to keep it authentic. Right, this is the next day. Unfortunately, I came out last night, I videoed what I did in the dark with a headlight on and I didn't have the external mic switched on so I've missed a little bit out but I'll basically take you around and I'll show you what I've done since the last time. So if you remember we had this support going all the way along here for the raised bed. That was already in. I've actually cut lengths of timber to go in here. And that took me a hell of a long time because I used that little folding saw and it bent many times and I had to straighten it out with a plumbing rock. But it got the job done. And in order to retain this support a little bit more, I've just put a few extra logs under here and I've basically just jammed logs in here just to support this main bed support. You can see there's various supports in here keeping it up all the way along there right to the end so there's that and I think I might have put an extra few supports going along here but probably the main thing that I did and didn't film was this and what that is is basically just a little bit more shelter for our entrance which is going to be in here and what I'm hoping is that will enable me to sit in here with enough headroom and do whatever it is I've got to do and not get wet because actually in the shelter there's not a lot of room I think I could just about sit up in it but it's basically just to sleep this end here that's looking all dirty and manky on the floor I'm gonna do something there as well but I think what we're gonna do now is put some more willow into this structure oh and I forgot to mention We've got the support that's held in with willow all the way along here and supported underneath with logs. But you can just see here, I've laid another log right across there just to support the back of the bed. That levels it up beautifully. Now you may remember we've used the willow to actually keep all of this structure held together. And it's doing a fine job of that. But I'm going to actually weave it in and out of here. I'm going to get some longer lengths and weave it in and out of here just to give me a little bit more support for when I start laying the branches on because the last thing I want is little twigs and so on sticking through into where I'm going to be sleeping and possibly poking my eye out on sharp bits of wood. Okay as I said you need to know what your trees are I'll just give you a little quick rundown of the different types of trees we're using. That is Leolandi you see that in people's woodlands and coming hedges all over the place up and down the country now it can get massive and really block out the light it's known as being a bit of a pest tree but just look at that beautiful thick foliage and it all lies one way as well which is very important when you're making a shelter and also a little and I are very good for cats to climb in as well aren't they Charlie and off in the distance there, we've got a spruce tree. Very similar to a Norway spruce, that's a Sitka. 
lovely heavy foliage. We've also got some up in here. And just to the right, we've got some Scots pine. That's the one I'm not going to be using. You can see the foliage on that is totally different. Not very good for making a shelter with. Here we've got the remains of a Sitka spruce which has been felled. And as you can see, it's got quite straight branches. And towards the end of those branches, we've got some quite heavy foliage. That's pretty good for making shelters with. That's a close up of it there. So you can imagine that layered on top of your shelter. It makes a good windproof and waterproof covering for a shelter. It's nice to use as well. And this is where I'm going to get the willow from. This is like a, a retaining wall that I built a few years ago using willow. And at the end of every year, I weave it into each other just to create a solid mass along the bottom there, just to prevent this bank side from collapsing. And all this growth has been put on in one year. That's what we're using as sort of a lashing to, um, to bind all our logs together. So I'm just nicking these off with the axe. And ideally I'm looking for pieces about quarter of an inch thick. They're the bendiest and by far the easiest to use. Okay, I think we'll start on the back because it'll be the easiest one to film. That's about it. That's all we need to do. Just weave them in and out. You can have them going down as well. Basically, just mesh them all in together. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty as long as it's effective. That's about it for the main skeleton of this structure and whilst that willow that we put on now doesn't look very neat it will give me extra places to hang branches on okay so now we're ready to actually cover this thing and make it weatherproof you could use any sort of tree branches or detritus leaves pretty much anything you find lying around to cover this I'm gonna be using the Leilandi because that's what I've got loads of around the garden that is perfect. Spruce would be a decent second choice, Norway fir, all sorts of decent fir trees, even Scots pine at a push, anything is better than nothing. And if you want to see a video where I make one out of, um, oh what the hell was it, beech. I used beech and ferns, I'll put the link to that in the video description as well because that shelter was a real cracker and it didn't take me anywhere near as long to build as it as this one has taken so far but that one didn't have a raised bed it just wasn't as complicated it's a very simple shelter so check that video out as well in video description and also in the pinned comment okay let's get on and cover this I'm gonna start with the smaller branches up here basically layer them on like tiles and I'm gonna put them on in such a way that the, it actually sheds the water I've seen a lot of people building shelters and they just throw things on all over the place and you know for a fact as soon as it rains the water is going to find the easiest route straight through the structure and into the guy sleeping in the structure. The way we're doing it the water will be shed off and one night when it's absolutely chucking down I'll get in here to test it. Okay I've sorted some piles out here they're basically the smaller branches so they're going to be going on first that's some spruce that'll go on as well 
but you can see it's nowhere near as dense as that. Hell of a difference. This one's going to be pretty much windproof. And down here we've got some very big branches, so them ones will go on last. We're basically going to lay all the small ones along the bottom, totally cover the bottom, and then we're going to go a little bit higher up and layer them. All the heavy ends of the branches are going to be facing up. That'll help to stop them blowing off. If you have them that way or just hide on all over the place, they're easily going to slide down and the rain is going to follow the easiest path. Just a close-up of what I'm talking about. If you've got them like that, the rain naturally falls off that. If you've got them that way up, it's just going to pee through on top of you. Some of these are bigger than others. We're just going to do the best we can. And if there's anywhere to tuck them in, like so, we'll tuck them in. That keeps them solid. That's the beauty of having all this willow and all this really strong skeletal structure. Gives us plenty of places to hang the branches. You know, even little piddly bits like this, they can lay on, it doesn't matter. It all builds into a really windproof, weatherproof structure. Don't worry if these are a little bit loose. When you put the big heavy ones on, everything will be sandwiched down really tight. See how the willow just allows that to tuck in there? Really solid. Lovely. Like so that one. Just weave it underneath the willow. Solid. Ordinarily, if I was using very short lengths of covering, I would go all the way around the bottom, maybe it's two or three feet up, and then all the way around again, halfway up, and then all the way around again to finish it off. This one I'm basically putting a few on the bottom, a bigger one on the top, just working them in however they come because they are all mixed up. Okay, that's the bottom two thirds of this backside covered. Uh, I can't see many gaps in there, apart from in the top obviously, and we've still got a hell of a lot more stuff to go on.
if you've got bits that are pretty long, just snap them like that. And that allows you to anchor it over the top of your structure. What do you reckon, Charlie? Where are you going? You looking all right so far? We are. Okay then, so as far as the smaller pieces to cover this structure goes, that's just about it. I mean, it's looking like a massive ghillie suit now. But, as you can see inside, it's very, very dark in there. I do still need to do quite a lot more covering on the top though. And we still have the big branches to put on as well. So I'm going to continue piling the small branches on top of here. I want this to be absolutely pitch black inside. If it's pitch black, I know that the water is going to be shed properly. The easiest way to see all the holes in it will be to go inside and just look where the, the light's shining in through. But it's pretty well covered there. That's taken a hell of a lot of branches. And as you can see, the structure is practically invisible. You know that skeleton that we built with the logs and the, the willow bindings? Pretty much invisible. Just right. Wouldn't be any good if I was a six footer, but for a little fella, this is perfect. Yeah, and there's some parts of that that are absolutely black. Other parts, like the end, you can see straight through it. So there's a lot more work to do. I'll do that, and then we'll get on to putting the big branches on, and I'll film that part. I'm gonna set about this spruce tree and get some nice, big, heavy branches then I'm going to take those down to where the shelter is. I'm going to put the large lengths of Leolandi on the shelter, followed by the big spruce branches to hold everything down. That will ensure that nothing disappears in the wind. And that's pretty much what we're looking for. See, it's reasonably flat, but it's very, very heavy. So that's gonna be great to keep everything buttoned down.
Now what I need is probably another 10 bits the size of this fella. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of heavy branches here. That'll cover that beautifully. And there's our really long lengths of the land eye. They're going to go on now and get covered over by the spruce. Most of these will actually go along the ridge because that's where the pieces from the side come up and meet. And by the very nature, they're a little bit sparse up there. So when you're looking along the ridge, you can see quite a lot of light. And if I put these lads right along the top of this shelter, ah, rain's going to get in. It's going to be a beautiful job. There's a couple of bits here that are actually the tops of the trees. So consequently they're quite round and bushy. They're no good for covering the structure. But if I take the axe to each individual branch here, I should get enough for the bed. So I'm gonna keep these. Bear in mind when you're oh, inside, looking at the walls to see any light coming through. Just because you can see light doesn't mean to say that the water will get through because you have got a very layered sort of covering on this, you know. But I want to try and make it really, really dark in there. If you can see light, you're going to get wind through it. If you can't see light, you're going to be very, very comfortable. <laughs> Looks even more like a massive ghillie suit now, doesn't it? <laughs> All right then. You can see that there's hardly any of those bits of um, Leolandi hanging down inside the structure. The little bits there are will just snap off. It's our bed and um, there's hardly any light coming in. That's the amazing thing about it. It's very, very well sealed. You know, that's all the little land eye. But we still need the Sitka on there as well. And I'm sorry if the picture's going a little bit dark and grainy. It's practically dark out here. So I'm going to get this stuff lashed on. And then we're about done. Apart from the bed. And the fire that I'm going to build outside it. But know what you're thinking you're thinking it's not looking as nice as it did before it had these on but it's not going to win any beauty contests anyway this is to hold everything down make sure that it doesn't just blow off this structure Okay, that's all of my Sitka spruce branches used up and it's practically dark. So I'm gonna do one more thing to this structure and that involves leaning logs like this up against it to hold that Sitka down, which in turn is holding the Leyland eye down. You can never make something too secure. The light's on on the camcorder, it's dark as anything. Too dark to do the bed. I'll come back tomorrow and do that. There's ample stuff for laying a beautiful bed out. 
And then after that we're finished. I will build a fireplace here, heat reflector, bouncing heat back into the doorway. And this is going to be a beautiful little place to come and chill out. Okay, to get it to this point, it's taken approximately five hours, which is quite a long time, but it is a reasonably complicated, substantial structure. If you'd just gone with a normal triangular frame, like I mentioned right at the very, very start of this video, you could have easily knocked this up in an hour or two. That is a really, really easy way to do it. Building something with a ridge and a, you know, a little doorway and all that sort of thing and a raised bed takes a hell of a lot longer, you know. So really what I'm trying to say is only expend as much energy building a structure as you need to. But I wanted to make something substantial and solid just to show you the various processes involved and give you some idea of how long it takes to build something like this. Because I see a lot of people building shelters and you can tell after a couple of hours they get pissed, they get tired, peed off, and they just give up and make a total arse of it. You know, there's no point doing something if you're going to make an arse of it. It's got to be right, you know. It's got to be right. Otherwise, you won't learn anything. You won't get any satisfaction out of it. I mean, that's why I come out in the dark and I build things like this. The first igloo I built was in the dark, you know. I haven't had gloves on. I've used minimal tools. I haven't used string to hold all the structure together because if I ever get stuck in a situation where I've got no string and I've got no tools, then I can build something, you know? I, I don't want to come down here with a chainsaw and all the gear because I won't learn anything, you know, especially if it's on a beautiful sunny day. Temperature now is approximately one degree Celsius, which is, I don't know, what's that in moon language? 36? Fahrenheit or something, I don't know what the hell Fahrenheit is. It's close to freezing anyway. They're the best conditions, you know? I mean, this is the first one for a long time that I've done where the weather's actually been dry. Okay, so welcome back. The last job is to put the bed in. We've already got the structure of the bed. We've already got the, the actual supports in there. All we need to do is just cut some nice straight lengths of this, which is Leylandi and lay that on top of all those log supports to create an insulated, soft sleeping area. So I'll just chop a load of them, I'll bring you inside and we'll lay them out and that'll pretty much be the shelter done. Now when I'm chopping these off, I'm not just throwing them in a heap, I'm stacking them all the same way. It makes them easier to get a hold of, it makes them easier to use and it just speeds the job up. And I'm trying to keep them quite straight. Some of them, when they go towards the trunk of the tree, bend in. And I don't want them all bendy because if they flip over, I'm going to get all those bendy, pointy bits in my back. So I'm making sure that the ends are not pointy. Even little bits like this will do. They'll go in somewhere. You know, even if they fall between the cracks in the logs that we've got there, they will help with the insulation. So that's the top of that little tree, practically skinned. I'll just chop this up and use the rest of the firewood, I think. actually see through into the back of this structure now we've got some light coming through there so I need to put a few more branches on the outside because the rest of it is pretty dark so 
So basically, I'm just starting with the long lengths. I'm going to layer them all over here, and then I'm and then I'm going to put all the short lengths on top of those ones so that they don't fall through all these gaps here. probably noticed these little ones I'm just kind of feeding them in underneath and just knitting everything in well together you know that certainly has created a beautifully soft insulated bed I mean that's really nice <laughs> it's good I think I'll use what I've got left in the way of the branches just to go around the outsides and cover in any little gaps and then we're about done really you could get two people in here It'd be a bit cozy but um, you know you and your lady friend or you and a man friend if you want to go broke back style either or you're gonna keep nice and warm snug together noticeably colder out here it's just hovering above zero degrees again and in there it's a hell of a lot warmer hell of a lot Good. all right let's take a look inside oh it's quite a lot darker at the back there that's good a little bit of light coming through here, but that won't be difficult to fill in. What a bed that is, eh? Okay, so that's about it as far as the shelter goes. Although I am going to build a little fireplace here and a heat wall to throw the heat back into this opening to keep the structure warm on the cold winter nights. Okay, next day, this time I'm going to be building a fireplace and a heat reflector to throw the heat back into our shelter. First of all, I'm just going to cram a few of these Sitka spruce branch ends underneath the bed, just to slow down any airflow under there and give a little bit of insulation. just like that. I don't want to stop the flow of air underneath there completely, but I do want to slow it down. So while the fire's throwing heat into here, the air under here will be held to some degree. You know, it'll be reasonably warm air traveling underneath here fairly slowly. If I just leave that open, it'll create a real draft. And if I totally block it off, the heat probably won't get in. So it's trying to marry the best of both worlds. Okay, so now we need to concentrate on the fire. The first thing I'm going to put up is the heat wall because this is on a bit of a slope. You maybe can't tell because the camera is also on a slope, but I'm going to use the back end or the bottom end of the heat wall to actually retain the fireplace. So I'm going to put the heat wall in and then build the ground up a little bit to kind of level it up. Okay, so first thing we need is some reasonably straight lengths of timber. This is a piece of old hazel, so it's reasonably straight and it's pretty strong as well. Yeah, so if I roughly find the middle and just do a straight cut with our saw, 
That'll give us something nice and flat to use a big rock against to drive this into the ground. That one's already got a point on, that's good. That one needs a point on, so I'll just put a point on this with our little axe. Okay, so now outside our place, we've got a little chopping block to chop kindling on reasonably near our fire. And that's also a handy place to put points on posts. Sometimes I wish I wasn't keeping it real. As I said, I wanted to build this without any string, without any tarps, all of that sort of nonsense. And as far as hand protection goes, no gloves. Presently, zero degrees again, but today it's windy and there's a chance of freezing rain. That's perfect because my hands are absolutely aching with a cold already. And I've only been out here well, I don't know, 20 minutes or something? Not long at all. Anyway, I've got a few more bits of wood to use as stakes. This one is a silver birch. These ones are the Sitka spruce branches. There's a bit of holly there. There's pretty much all sorts. But they'll all do the same job. Okay, as far as hammering those stakes in, this rock is going to do. As long as I keep my hands on the top of it, when I'm braying down on those stakes, I won't trap my fingers, because if your hands are underneath, and you bring that down between the rock and the stake, it's going to explode the end of your finger. And I've done that before. <laughs> so please don't do it, because it bloody well hurts. I want it angled like this so that it throws maximum heat back to the shelter. That's more tricky to make. It basically takes twice as long, but it's gonna ensure that a lot of the heat that's generated from the fire is thrown that way. So cold, I'm gonna roll my sleeves down. This one's got a bit of a bend in it. The straighter these are, the better it is to knock them in because obviously when you're putting downward force on, all the force is going straight down. With this one, with it being bent, the force is making it bounce all over the place. That's pretty solid, good. That one went in well. Now I'm not after a perfect parabolic arc, but I, I do want something that's gonna throw the majority of the heat back to the shelter. And that looks okay. Okay, so the basic idea is just to build a wall of logs here and here. You might notice I've put an extra couple of supports in the back just to hold them better because there is going to be a kind of bit of weight on there. And when I've got to about four or five high, I'm going to put one in the front as well. 
In fact, I'm going to put two in the front of each side. Like that. Bray them down, just to hold everything nice and secure. Then I can start building the ground up here. If you didn't have logs, you could just go with the stakes, weave willow or hazel or something like that in, or even build something with rocks. Doesn't have to be logs. I have these things handy, that's why I'm using the logs. Okay, so we've got a decent height of logs, probably, I don't know, two foot six, about 750 millimeters or 75 centimeters high. That's easily gonna be high enough. We are gonna build the ground up a little bit here, but as long as we've got some sort of wall, throw the heat up the bank, it's gonna be nice and cozy. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just using a little bit more willow to tie these stakes together. Just weaving them all in and out. I might go down into some of the logs and wrap those together as well. Just to bind everything up and make sure that the sides of this don't just go Yeah, as you can see, that's tied it together quite well. I'm just going to bind all the tops of these together and then we'll see about plugging some of these gaps in the wall. Now like most of the work with the willow it doesn't have to be fancy. Basically as long as it holds these two bits together, supports the structure it's good enough. That's the wall pretty much done, but as far as plugging the gaps go, we've got some very handy wood sedge here. Just gonna poke that in. I'll just make sure that all the heat is thrown this way. Really just poke anything into the gaps, it doesn't really matter. Cram leaves in, cram branches and sticks and stones, all sorts in. That's just the same sort of method you would employ if you were building walls up to make a shelter as well. You know, you would just cram all the gaps full of muck. Just to make sure that the wind didn't get in and the heat didn't get out. In this case, it's just to ensure that the fire stays fairly sheltered and the heat is thrown back where we want it to go. Now what I want to do, now that I've got this pretty much solid and more or less sealed up, I want to try and level up the ground in here because we are on a, on a canny slope. So basically just going to use this to rake the earth down from around the shelter into here, level this up and then I'll get some stones and I'll make some sort of fireplace in here. Now the bigger the stones we use, the more heat these are going to hold. So after we've had a good raging fire, big stones are going to stay warm for hours and they're just going to create a little microclimate around the shelter. So that's why I'm going big.
I'm sitting where the fire is going to be but it's still a little bit low here so I'm gonna get some ash and mud and muck and all that from where I've been having a fire earlier in the year drag that in here and pack this bottom with the ash so that it acts as a sort of barrier between our new fire and the ground because the ground is um, it's not very peaty but it's got a lot of organic matter in it you know all of this wood sedge has got big fibrous roots there's been a lot of leaf litter you know we've probably got about this much and the last thing I want is for a new fire to get into the forest floor and start spreading all over the place because our shelter is only about five feet away from this fire so it wouldn't be long before that crept in and just burnt the whole thing down so I want to try and sidestep that possible episode of the life of this shelter <laughs> therefore a good barrier between a fire and the ground is a good move definitely worth taking the time to do especially because this shelter is not just like an overnight thing you know it's it's uh, it's quite a an undertaking I don't want it all just to go up in flames so I'm gonna use this which is the gob cut from one of our trees that were felled I'm basically gonna use it as a spoon to scoop up the ash from over there drag it and tip it in here to create our barrier Okay, so that's our fire in front of the shelter, just about done. The heat wall is not very tall, but it will throw heat this way, that way, basically towards the shelter. These huge rocks here will hold a hell of a lot of heat. They'll basically just act as a radiator. We've got approximately two and a half inches of ash and clay soil and all sorts of pre-burnt muck in the bottom of here to act as a good barrier so we should have a good base for the fire and we've got stones pretty neatly packed in around the sides to, and that'll just prevent a lot of sparks jumping out and it'll also prevent the fire from spreading as well hopefully yeah I think we're pretty much down to the soil there so we're not gonna have any problems with the fire spreading yeah so I think we're pretty much there now that's enough of a wall to throw a nation of heat back here the design of the shelter means that the heat is going to be held in it for a long time the big stones around the side are going to act as some sort of radiator you know radiating heat back to this they're also going to prevent sparks jumping out we've got a barrier between the fire and the ground I think yeah that's it it's done I'll store some logs in the far end of the shelter because I've got space in there to keep them off the ground under cover and next time it's really really bad weather I'll come out and I'll have plenty of stuff for the fire and I'll see how it performs under more or less arctic conditions so join me for that thanks very much for watching if you found this video useful hit the thumbs up share it wherever you want and I'll see you next time <laughs> Just look at the size of this in here, man, it's massive. <laughs> you could easily get two people in here. And I'll just give you a quick look outside. That's our lovely fire going. I can feel the heat from here. See the end of the shelter here. Well, that fire's died down from what it was. I can 
still feel the heat radiating this far back definitely feel it so it is warming up the air inside of here and because it's so well insulated it's actually holding the heat there's a definite difference between the temperature in here to outside because outside it is hovering just above zero and it's very windy as you can probably hear